Okay, my name is uh, Isaac Wafula Opilo. I'm the forest station manager, Rondiani Forest Station. I work uh, under KFS. And uh, as a manager, my work is to coordinate all the forestry activities in the state. We are grateful for partnering with Ketraco uh, to help restore the degraded forest. Under the spirit of participatory forest management that is captured under the, our, our Forest Conservation and Management Act, we collaborate with other stakeholders, including now Ketraco, to ensure that we work together and restore the various ecosystems that are degraded. So with Ketraco and other stakeholders coming on board, we are going to accelerate the work that we are doing and I'm very sure we are going to meet the target because the environmental issues is now uh, at least a preserve to everybody to involve himself so that we can work together. So it will help accelerate the achievement of our targets and restore our ecosystem. We have Legally, we are legally involving the community in conservation and management of the forests. How we are doing it is that we have various tools that we are using to work together because everything has to be formal. So we have, we are, we are, we have developed management, participatory forest management agreements and plans with the community that are in place to help us work together with the community formally so that now, as we work together, we can meet the target that we are supposed to meet. So how we are involving them is through the various uh, plans. We have the participatory forest management plan with the community. We have the forest management agreement with the community. Again, it is through participatory forest management approach. But now, under the community, it is very legal and it's very formal. We go to an extent of forming management agreements with them, as I've said, participatory forest management plans that will fast track their implementation to ensure that we achieve what we, have, uh, we are doing with them. Participatory forest management, we are looking at bringing all the interest. If a forest is, is maybe affecting a certain group of people, those people can partner with us because they are affected in one way or another. So to bring the, the, the we, we, to form the participatory forest ma management plans, what we always do is, first of all, before we come up with the participatory forest management plan, we always do what we call forest resource survey, putting in mind that the community also is supposed to benefit from the same forest that they are going to help us conserve. Now, as we do the forest survey with them, we are going to look at the various resources and the various opportunities that the community can also benefit from that. So when we are doing now the management, the, 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 the plantation, the, the participatory forest management plans with the community, we are also now capturing some of the user rights that we can also give them so that as we undertake the various activities in the management plan, they can also benefit from the, the various interests that they have in the forest. Now, we are monitoring and fast-tracking the growth of the various trees that have been planted. One, by ensuring that the planted areas are protected. We have rangers to do the work. We also have community scouts that help us ensure that the various, uh, uh, the various uh, activities that can interfere with the growth of those, uh, those seedlings are prevented from, from happening. So we always ensure we protect. And then another issue is that we always monitor their growth and do the survival count of the trees. That is after planting the trees, we go back. Maybe we planted a thousand seedlings. Now we go back after three, after three months to see now, to, to look at what has survived against what we planted. Once the survival is less than 33%, we replant the area. But if the survival is above 33%, what we go in and do, we now go and do what we call beating up. Those trees that died, we ensure we go back there, then we replace those trees. That activity is called beating up. There is also what we call spot weeding. By spot weeding, we will ensure that the trees that have been planted are not choked. Eh? 
and we can easily now monitor their growth because at least where they are, they have been that that area is well managed. So we always do what we call uh, spot weeding to ensure the trees are not choked by other weeds. And that spot weeding will also help us now do what we call survival count. We will ensure that we planted here. You know, when you plant and you don't manage, you'll find that it's not easy to know where you had planted. So through spot weeding now, it will help us do the survival count. Then from the survival count, we estimate the survival percentage. Then from there, it will now inform us as to whether we should beat up or replant the area. So with those kind of techniques, we ensure that at least what we have planted grows. But as we grow trees, we should ensure that they are protected because we are growing trees, we are not just planting. So I also urge our partners to ensure that the component of protection and maintenance is well captured so that we can at least grow trees.